What's going on guys? Welcome to the Sigma Nato channel. This is my weekly cigar journal where I talk about all the amazing smokes, the good, the bad, and the ugly cigars I've had throughout the week. If you're new here, this probably seems like a crazy amount of cigars, but I assure you, this was all done in moderation and they were only smoked one at a time. With that said, I got a sick lineup for you guys this week. But first, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and all the links that you're looking for are going to be in the description box below. Now, let's get into it. All right, so we're kicking things off with the My Father Cigars, Flor de las Antillas. This is in the Robusto Vitola. When I see bands like this on cigars, you know, it's just something I really appreciate. You know, I always enjoy these in the Toro format, and I love it so much, but I wanted it in a shorter smoke time, so I picked this up. Sheesh, man, it's been a while since I picked this up. Quite a few months, actually. So it's just been chilling in my humidor for a long time. And I did use this for that dry boxing tutorial video. And so I dry boxed it for a good maybe 24 hours, maybe a day and a half. So in that first third, man, I was picking up lots of sweet notes from this. And it was almost kind of tangy. I was getting some fruity notes with just a hint of pepper in there. Really light pepper in there. And what I really wanted to compare with the Toro size is how am I going to get those transitions because this cigar for me in that Toro uh, Vitola it has these amazing transitions that you just you can't miss it and this one definitely lived up to the Toro format for me and it was definitely a very distinct transition into that second third when I went towards the uh, dark flavors started getting some cedar and some pepper and even a little bit of cinnamon in there and uh some more pepper was picking up you know as i was burning through that second third and definitely into the final third I had another very distinct shift and it was just you know i was loving it because this switched to these darker flavors dark chocolate espresso and everything was just elevated even stronger what I love most about this cigar is it's an absolute steal. If you know where to look, you can find this stick for as low as $6, maybe up to $10 a cigar easily. So for what you're getting, it's an absolute steal and uh, always provides a great experience. I mean, it's good for any occasion. So yeah, what an amazing cigar. And next up, I went with the CAO Brazil in the Anaconda Vitola. Now, this is a crazy huge cigar. This thing is eight inch by 58 ring gauge. And I love the Brasilia blend. I usually get it in the uh, Robusto size, but you know what? I scored a crazy deal on these. So I figured why not? And I had them in there. This was a night that I just really wanted my fix and have no care whether I finished the cigar or not. So it was kind of just like a throwaway cigar for me. So if it works out to be a good cigar, then hey, I'm happy. And if it doesn't, then I wasn't going to stress about that either. So that first third kicked in with some nice coffee flavors. And, you know, the draw was a little bit too loose. And I usually prefer a loose draw, but this one was just a little bit too much for me. Now, this blend is definitely a very good blend. You know, usually I go for the Robusta Vitola, which it's usually called the CEO Brasilia Goal. And that one is a great smoke tons of chocolatey flavors in there so picking up this vitola i know it's going to be different but i figured why not it's worth a shot and so far it's been a very decent smoke into that second third this is where it kicks in i got some of that chocolate flavor that i love and that's exactly why i love this blend that second third that chocolate rolls in it is just delicious and that draw improved and tightened up just a little bit as well as you smoke a cigar, it'll always tighten and restrict just a little. And also picked up with smoke production. Now I'm getting a lot of smoke. This is what I like about a good cigar and it's starting to get better. My intention going in with this cigar, I didn't really have a lot of time to smoke, but I really wanted a cigar anyway. So, you know, I didn't want to waste a good cigar on this. So I figured, hey, that's why it's good to have some cheap throwaway sticks. And that's what this one was for. But getting into that final third, I started getting some dark chocolate, some coffee. And some strength picked up here as well. By the end of it, I was pleasantly surprised, man. It turned out to be a very good smoke. I still prefer the Robusto format over this. That one is a way more satisfying smoke, I think. Overall, it was a decent cigar and I enjoyed it. And next up, we've got the Placencia Alma del Fuego 
in the Robusto Batola. Now, obviously, I've had this one in previous videos before. This is definitely a favorite cigar of mine. And it's always a treat to have, so I was definitely looking forward to it. Now, I know it has this closed foot on the end and that you're supposed to stoke the cigar to get it to light up. But I don't know, man. I just really prefer toasting the cigar over stoking it. It's just a preference thing, I guess. You can definitely light it. Either way, whatever works for you. But on the initial light up on this cigar, man, I was getting some spice flavors and very earthy notes. You know, that initial light up was very, very good. And uh, I remember I was working on this video all day. I had hit the jam. I was totally spent. I was so burnt out before I had this cigar. So I was very much looking forward to this cigar. And by the time I got to that second, third, man, this cigar was really hitting me hard. That strength was just a little bit too much for me to handle. So I had to get up, grab a snack, which is also a great idea to have something sugary. If you start feeling funny, you know, it helps immediately. It'll get rid of any kind of headache or sickness you start feeling, any kind of uneasiness it'll pretty much get rid of that right away just have something sugary that definitely did the trick here for me and in that second third i started getting more woodsy notes and even some honey notes i'm guessing it probably had something to do with the cookies i just ate as well so and nothing wrong with that it was still a great tasting cigar and in that final third you know i was getting this very nice smoke texture for me it was just like this very smooth and pleasant smoke and as for flavor notes in that final third, those woodsy notes that I was getting that kind of started off in the beginning as earthy and then it went to woodsy in the second third. And then now I started getting cedar and hickory. It kind of just gradually got more intense with the woodsy notes. And, and in that final third, it just hit this climax, which was just perfect. So there we go, of course, Placencia Alma del Fuego, another amazing cigar experience. And next up, we've got the Casa Cuba. This is a cigar from Arturo Fuente in the Divine Inspiration Vitola. I love the name of this cigar. I love everything about this cigar. And once again, I mean, just look at that band with the, like, it's like a coat of arms or something. It's just amazing artwork. God, I love this stuff. What I also love more is the scent and the aromas on the wrapper. So before you even light this cigar up, you can just smell it. And it's got this strong honey, like maple syrup like scent and honestly it kind of reminds me a lot of the opus x those aromas coming off of this cigar are very similar so on to some of the flavor notes i was getting with this cigar in that first third straight from the jump i was getting a lot of nutty flavors which was very nice and in the second third there was a lot of creaminess and with the green tea finish that picked up and i think that that's what i love about this cigar kind of has a bit of both worlds you know it's got the strength of those stronger cigars but it's also got creaminess and green tea notes which i absolutely love when i get those notes from connecticut cigars and those strong floral notes as well these are my absolute favorite notes to get from a cigar that's why i love having this one in the morning but sometimes it just packs a little bit too much punch to have early in the morning this right here gives me opus x vibes all the way through that final third it picked up on you know some more of that floral notes that stuck through from the second to the third also it picked up some more spice and like chili peppers on the end so many different flavors just coming out of this cigar it was so good man <laughs> and you know it's good when you accidentally like inhale it and i remember i accidentally inhaled this thing a couple times and you know i hate when that happens but i was just like really into it definitely an amazing cigar and you know what i want you guys to really hear what it was like out here, just smoking in the rain. I just know it's gonna be tough to top that last cigar, but this is the final cigar of the week, and that's gonna be the Davidoff Signature number one. This is the creme de la creme when it comes to Connecticut cigars. There's no question about it. Kicking things off with that first third. And this thing is just decadent. Lots of cinnamon and green tea flavors. For me, that green tea flavor just hits the spot. And nothing brings it out, I think, like this signature number one right here. Just classic Connecticut flavors. There's no doubt about it that Davidoff makes the best Connecticut cigars. 
So it is always a treat whenever I can have one. This cigar, which is the number one Vitola, you've also got the number two in the Signature 2000. Both are phenomenal smokes as well, that Signature 2000. The last time I had one, the memory of it is still in my head. It was such a great cigar. Rolling into that second third and you get this leather and earthy and cedar flavors, all with that sweet floral undertone. I am telling you, man, Davidoff cigars are really something special. The way those flavors just dance with each other is unlike anything else. And going into that final third, those floral notes get intensified and some spice picks up as well, bringing in like this cinnamon and cocoa flavor. But yeah, this thing had a very strong finish in the end. That strength picked up a lot. And man, oh man, this had a long smoke time, probably two hours or more. An absolute treat, as always, enjoying a Davidoff cigar. And that about wraps it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.